Known as the floating city, the queen of the Adriatic or Serenissima, Venice might be one of the most famous places in not just Italy, but the entire world. It's a city empty of cars with nothing but narrow canals laced with long boats and charming bridges, and to no surprise, it even has a cuisine of its own. Today, we're going all out in Venice and getting our first impressions of both the city and the country of Italy because this is our first stop in our 13th country. We've got so much to see, so let's just get right into the video. We have made it to the Rialto Bridge, which was built all the way back in 1588. And back then, it was actually considered one of the world wonders. And coming to it today, it's still really incredible. And I actually didn't realize that there were shops that line the bridge. But it's a lot wider than I expected. The last 30 minutes were spent walking around and people watching, so let's talk first impressions because this is my first time in the city. Yeah, this is actually my second time in the city. The first time that I came here, I was with a tour that I went on in high school, so I had a very like touristic experience. I honestly felt like I was visiting like Disney World or something just because the places we went were very busy. Coming this time is so different because we're finally able to walk through all of these side streets and experience Venice as the city that it really is versus just this Disney world of tourists and people. Yeah, and like walking through the streets, it feels like you're walking through a maze because you don't know what you're gonna find when you turn the corner and the streets get very, very narrow and it's just so cool looking up and seeing all these beautiful windows and shutters just swinging in the wind. Yeah. It's a very magical place and just, you know, add on the water aspect of the city. One of my favorite parts is just these staircases and steps that go straight into the water because it feels like the water is integrated into the city. Yeah, I think it's also really Really cool that all of the utilities so you'll see like the trash pickup is on boats as well as like all of the packages that people need to get yeah. are shipped here and then they are put on a boat and then people with these trolley things are taking them up the stairs it's just part of how the city runs anyhow we're gonna walk around a little bit more but I think we want to get a little taste of the Venetian cuisine because it is something different from the Italian cuisine like a thousand miles with these two things to find a bench but we found one so let's talk about the Venetian cuisine so traditional Venetian food is broadly made up of three different things seafood risotto and soups and so today we are starting it off strong with the seafood right here I have two like iconic Venetian dishes I have sardé in saor and then I also have bacala manticato and they are both on pieces of polenta and if you don't know what polenta is it is kind of like a brick of cornmeal but it's really good it's nice and crispy so let's talk about this one first here we have some fried sardines as well as some slightly fried onions and they are in this very sweet but tangy sauce and they've got some raisins and pine nuts thrown on in there I might have to be careful with this because I'm actually like very allergic to pine nuts and so um, Chad might be eating most of this one, but I still want to give it a taste. And then this right here is dried creamy cod. And it looks very, very um, heavy. <laughs> like mashed potatoes. Yeah, yeah. He was giving us a huge slop on this polenta and I was like, yeah, let's go for it. That is really good. Tastes like some pickled sardines and onion. I do feel a little tingle in the back of my throat. So that is all I'm gonna eat of this one just cause the pine nuts are getting to me. But I can eat plenty of this one. So. Yeah, she was about to take another bite and I was like, no, 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 no. <laughs> so this tastes like cod mixed with tartar sauce. So you don't even have to take the extra step of dipping your fish in the sauce. It's already there for you. So what could be better? Now here comes the little seafood treasure box. In here I have all sorts of fried seafood. I've got some shrimp, some squid. Um, I think these are sardines. They're tiny, <laughs> tiny fish. Um, and then a little piece of polenta as well. I saw him just like scooping all of it up, throwing it in the batter and tossing in the fryer. Oh yeah. Mmm. 
Well, that was a very delicious start to the day. We are now walking over to what is said to be the prettiest bookstore in all of Italy. We've made it inside of this really famous bookstore here that is giving me total Harry Potter vibes. Yeah. Like, there are books everywhere, it's very antique. It also feels like if Venice was a bookstore just because there are a lot of like alleyways yeah. and like hidden spots you can go find. It's true. Well, we've probably crossed like a dozen bridges so far and that is because Venice has over 400 bridges around the city. Yeah, and they're all built so differently. Like this one, in order to connect this alleyway, they've built it at an angle yeah. to get over there. Because they built it at an angle, they needed to angle this building. <laughs> so, it's all custom. Yeah, it's all to say it's very creative. We have just wandered over to the Bridge of Sighs and this bridge is actually very sad because it is where criminals have to pass through before going to jail and they get one last look out at Venice through this very small window that honestly has a lot of stone covering it. They get one tiny little glance and I guess they sigh because they have to go to jail. Um, I, I would probably sigh too, <laughs> but at least they do get a final look before heading to their doom. <laughs> <laughs> We have made it to the most iconic spot here in Venice. We are at the Piazza San Marco or St. Mark's Square. And this place has been the center of all things Venetian for over a thousand years. And while I was doing research on Venice, I learned so much. First off, Venice was a major trading hub with the East and the West. So a lot of wealthy families became rich off of trade, which is why they have all of these extravagant houses that you could see along the Grand Canal. But also, Venice was the first to import coffee. So back in the 1500s, they were the first ones to bring coffee here, and it was actually used um, for medicine before people fell in love and they opened up over 200 different cafes all in the city of Venice. And if you don't know, coffee is a major part of Italy's culture. So all of that love for coffee started right here in this city. So I can't imagine a better place for us to be starting our trip. And it's just really special to be able to be here and to know more of the history about this place. Because I feel like that's what makes being here even more special than just the beautiful buildings. We've just stopped by an eatery to pick up some chiquetti, and this actually reminds me very much of the pinchos up in San Sebastian, Spain. They're kind of like little snacks that have bread on the bottom and some toppings, and I got one with some smoked salmon and then one with some prosciutto. So here in Venice, we have two experiences book that I've been looking forward to for so long. And the first one, I think is a bucket list experience for many different people. It's to ride a gondola through the canals and we're heading there right now. Uh, we've got the ticket booked with Get Your Guide. So we're ready to go, easy peasy. I believe we booked this over a month ago. So the anticipation of this ride right now is pretty high. I'm very excited. So I know this is kind of like a very touristy experience, but this is so worth it. Yeah. Because like getting off of the streets and away from the people and just being on here by yourselves on a private gondola ride, you can see Venice in such a different light. Mm -hmm. I didn't realize how many buildings there were that have like no sidewalk around them. Yeah. Like mm -hmm. it's literally like building and the only way you could see it is on a boat. We're going under a bridge. <laughs> it's very magical. Yeah. I feel like I'm on a movie set. So our expert gondolier just told us that we just passed Mozart's house. Yeah. <laughs> he lived so here. So random. Didn't yeah. even know that. For a period of time. 
and we just Whoa. saw it. So I think this is a fantastic time to say a huge thank you to Get Your Guide for supporting our channel. Whether you're looking for tickets or guides to the biggest tour sites in a city, kind of like the gondola ride that we just did, or if you're looking for more unique experiences, kind of like what we'll be doing this evening, Get Your Guide has got you set. They offer over 60,000 experiences in more than 3,600 destinations around the world, and when you book with them, you'll know that your experiences are being provided by knowledgeable local experts. And I think my favorite part about my experience with Get Your Guide so far has actually been their customer service because we actually had to cancel and change our reservation, which by the way, on any booking with Get Your Guide, you can cancel up to 24 hours ahead of time and get mm -hmm. all of your money back. Yeah. But their app has been so helpful because it holds the tickets for you. You don't have to print it out. And if you need to find the meeting point for a place, it's already in the app. So you just click on it and it'll take you straight to where you need to go. Yeah, so as like really big world travelers, this has been so convenient because it helps a lot with the planning process. It helps you find experiences. Mm -hmm. It helps you organize everything. Yeah. So we're just very happy to be working with them. And yeah. just again, thank you so much to Get Your Guide for supporting what we do. So before we go and enjoy our second big experience of the day, we need to go and grab some dinner. And tonight, I think I'm feeling some risotto. <laughs> we have here two spritz veneziano or also known as aperol spritz everywhere we look people have these orange glasses on their tables or in their hands and so of course we have to give it a try it was also included in the combo deal for our dinner to a great day in venice yes i think it tastes like um fanta of course with alcohol but with like this really big squeeze of grapefruit juice as the aftertaste. So kind of like bitter at the end. Wow. Oh. <laughs> oh my goodness. This is for a whole family. It stretches the length of our table and that is how you know it is a big portion. It's like a risotto canal. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Take a gondola ride straight through it. Yes. Thank you for the visuals, Chad. So you cannot come to Venice and not have some risotto. We decided to go with risotto al nero di sepia, which is, as you can see, a squid ink risotto. It is very black and it is very fragrant. So let's try it out. We've never had anything squid ink before when in Venice. <laughs> Sounded very hesitant. <laughs> no hesitations. This like brings me right back to when we were in Valencia, Spain and we had paella there. And I was like, I've been missing out on this my entire life. Oh, oh missed don't my mouth. Miss. <laughs> <laughs> Too excited. Whoa. And there's squid in there when I thought it couldn't get any better. Let us feast. This would be great for Halloween, the black and orange. <laughs> <laughs> I was looking over at Chad, I'm like, Chad, you're wearing black lipstick. <laughs> and he was like, you're wearing black teeth. And then we realized that it looks like we just ate 20 Oreos thanks to this squid ink risotto. <laughs> We've made quite the dent. <laughs> to end the meal, we have our very first taste of Italian coffee. I got an espresso and then Chad got a macchiato. Chad will always get to do the taste test for the coffees. All right, quickly, which one's better? Greek, Turkish, or Italian, or Colombian? All of them are perfect in their own way. <laughs> that is the safe answer. But Colombian. And Italian so far. No, no sugar. No sugar? No sugar. How come? <laughs> how, how come I can't put any sugar All right. in my coffee? You're fine, you can put sugar in your coffee. I'll fine. pour it for you. No, no, no. I don't need the extra sugar. Okay. We've just gotten ready for our big end to Venice. And you guys are probably wondering like, what are they gonna do? 
Well, my first choice originally was to go and see this traveling opera just because you can't come to Venice and miss out on a musical experience. But sadly, they were all booked out for the days that we are here. So instead, we're gonna go and experience a live Italian orchestra, which isn't half bad, I must say. Um, I'm so excited. They're gonna be playing some of Vivaldi's best songs, things like The Four Seasons. And I actually grew up listening to Vivaldi because my parents made us listen to uh, classical music every single night when I was going to sleep and Vivaldi was one of my favorites. Of course, we will link this experience down in the description box along with that traveling opera. So if you do get a seat, like let us know how it goes because it had amazing reviews and that would have been cool to hear singing alongside musical instruments. <laughs> <laughs> We've gotten a seat right in the front. We are a little bit off to the side, but we still have a pretty good view of all the musicians. And I think it's starting pretty soon. Uh, we can't record, obviously, mm -hmm. but we'll tell you about our experience afterwards. Wow, what an absolutely amazing experience. It really reminded me of the power of music and how it's able to express things that language really can't. Honestly, incredible. Yeah, and the acoustics in there tonight were out of this world. Yeah. Like it just, it's a whole different experience when you see it live and you can see their facial expressions. You can, yeah. you know, feel the vibrations in the room, all the components, all the instruments, all the layers. Yeah, the nuance, the change in volume. Yeah. But I think my favorite part was watching the musicians play mm -hmm. and just how intense they would get into it and they were having so much fun looking at each other because it wouldn't happen without all of them playing together. Yeah, yeah. they all need each other. And with that, I think we're gonna um, end the video here. If you'd like to join us as we continue through Italy and beyond, uh, hit subscribe. We're going to 50 countries around the world. And thank you mm -hmm. so much to everyone on our Patreon supporting yes. our dreams and cheering us on. Mm -hmm. And with that, ciao. Ciao guys. <laughs> Thank you.